Welcome back my YouTube friends. So because of this quarantine and the COVID and all that, it's a really, really nice opportunity to learn some new stuff. And this video is all about. So this video is going to be a request by that guy. Yeah, if you're watching, this video is for you. So he's asking, how did you learn where and how to contour the portraits of neo traditional style and it is something what I run into every single day every single time I do one it's always complicated you always need to find like the, the perfect line in between I don't even know how to explain between what but I'm gonna show you so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go on Pinterest I like Pinterest I always use Pinterest we're gonna get a decent image of a woman a portrait I like women, I, I was just gonna go for women. And second, we're gonna print that out and then we're gonna use our friend Lightbox and we're gonna transfer that on a paper and I will explain to you guys what I, what you should look for, what how you should lose, what line size, all what matters and all what makes it look good, yeah? So let's jump on the Pinterest and let's find some good image. I would say I spend quite a lot of time looking through all these photos, looking for the clean, really, really clean HD looking portrait. And I look for something what talks to me. You know, a lot of people prefer different styles. As you see, there's more sideways and more hands on the face. Some people hate doing hands, so they skip that portrait. And uh, I love doing hands, so I'm always looking for something like that. Like something what attracts me like this, this clean image, good looking face. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, see, it's a clean image, I can see the hands really good, like it will be easy to line them, and uh, let's see what else is out there, so it's always clean, nice contrast, readable, so it, the image explains itself dead clean, because if you run into like photo where for example like that one, it's hard for people to understand where the hands go, where the fingers go, what is going on so you might run into a problem so i'm looking for the image where it's dead straightforward dead clean and and really good really. And this is pretty much what I do every single time when I'm looking for an image. I go through loads of them, hundreds of them. I don't pick the one who's looking at me at like first. I, through, I go through hundreds and then I find something what talks to me, what looks at me. Because you, you need to be in it to draw really good, you know. If you're gonna push yourself to draw like the first image you see, you might not like it. So you don't really enjoy drawing it and so you don't really push your hardest to make it look the best like you could make it look so you need to find something that talks to you what you like what you prefer so from that moment on you're gonna be most likely to put full effort in to get it to look as best as you can make it and what I was looking for was a clean image of the face so you can see like eyes really nice either this corner as well you can see really nice nice details on the face just little accents really clean image for their lips I don't need to like be frustrated what should I do where should I do I can see them I can see the nose holes why sometimes that gets that becomes a problem and I can see them really nice um, what else I don't think I don't know that I'm gonna change a little, little bit here probably or maybe I'm gonna leave it I don't know but what I was looking for it was clean image self-explained and nice contrast I can see all the highlights I can see all the little bits little sparkles a little bit of that and uh, I think it's bang on image for me like if you if, if you if this is not like what you would prefer to do I understand 
but it's just something what I prefer to do and for this video it's teaching you guys what to do what not to do I'm gonna take this and this is how today's winner so let me print it out and then we're gonna jump in a light box and the paper so there it is from my iPad to the paper I'm actually quite surprised how good it printed you can't see that on a, on a camera but it's really really nice I'm well surprised wasted all the ink by the way <laughs> So much black use there, unnecessary, uh, end up there. But actually, actually that's quite bang on, like didn't need, need to bring that out, that's quite perfect, that's all we need today. So I'm going to show you how to do it on a light box, but just in case if you got iPad like me, so what you would do, you would go on Procreate, I got Procreate, I use put Procreate, and then what you do, what I mostly do is, say grab a new one, then you bring that image in there what I mostly do is I turn the saturation a little bit lower see you can see all the lines but it's not as black and then you put new layer on top of it and when you draw let's say we got let's say inking studio pen that's my favorite and you can literally follow as I'm doing on a paper you can do exactly the same here you grab a small one and you line it yeah so you can see it's black and the one layer underneath which is the real image is lighter and that prevents people from drawing in the wrong layer mostly when you when you're a new one on this platform what mostly happens is you start to draw on this layer like that one and then end of the day you realize damn you're on the wrong layer if you make a stencil and you have done the whole thing on the same layer as the portrait you have to start right from the beginning you literally have to start from zero so i do i literally get saturation down let's say increase that to here and this is why i do yeah so you can you can follow me on iPad if you got here, but today we're gonna do it on a paper. So let's jump in. So remember yeah, sketchbook goes underneath, then you put the light box, then you put the image, the one you wanna transfer, then the paper goes over and you can see right through. And for that not to move, I'm gonna use a little fraction of the tape. So I'm gonna tape this image down to the back here. So in case if I move around, the, the image doesn't move. Otherwise, if you're gonna, if you do the line work and then accidentally do this, that's say you need to like go back and then you readjust. It's just waste of time and creating problems. For you. So it's just uh, get the image and tape it. Then you know it's not going anywhere and you can move as much as you want, you can wiggle, scribble, you can twist all this around, it's not going anywhere. Just saving yourself a bit headache. So, that's done. So let's start mining. What I'm gonna use will be 0.2, that'll be like the average line. Then when you can need to find 0.05. I got about 200 of them, so I don't know which one works, which one not, but we're gonna find out. So, that's 0 0.2, just in case. 0 0.0. Maybe, maybe we need 0 0.5, but I, I'm not really sure. And we need to find 0 0.8. That's gonna be our outside line. Yeah, 0 0.8. It's not focusing, boy. You can hear me. It's 0 0.8. Done. That should be it. So let me explain how I do it, yeah? So imagine there's loads of lines right here. A lot going on. You can see the hair. There's string after string after string. And, and it's hard to make it look like a hair. Plus it's hard to make it look readable because it's going to look like spaghetti if you just keep lining with the same size of line. So what I do is I make, hopefully they can see that. Imagine all these are same size lines and they all look pretty much the same. I don't know if you can see that, but imagine same size, you got line after line after line after line after line, 
and it gets like really flat doesn't make any dimension doesn't create any depth any anything like that so it always just looks like the same so what i do is i do with a small 0.1 or 0.2 all the inside and then i grab 0.8 and i frame it let's put the way you can see it guys yeah so i frame the whole thing like that see it's easier to see what's outside how far it goes where it ends and what's going on inside and then if you do like the next same lines busy a lot of lines a lot going on but if you line with the bolder one the whole outside line now you can see there's two items images subjects whatever that is there's two of them next to each other but if you wouldn't line with the 0.8 the line size would be the whole exactly the same and this one is pretty much the same as that one and you wouldn't understand what's going on so a lot of artists they they, they they pick one size for the whole thing the whole design and it's really hard for your eyes to pick it what it is it doesn't give any like dimensions any depth any 3, 3d looking ones it's just hard for your eyes basically to pick it up now but once you do this you know exactly there's two subjects and there's something going on inside imagine these are roses and if you line the whole thing with the same line it just looks like bush but then if you line like that you can see there's two roses and it's just a mess going on in the middle yeah that's the principle i'm going so we're gonna start with something dead simple what i do firstly i do something that's simple then i go more complicated then i might get more complicated till i have no choice not to do the stuff i didn't want to do it from the beginning <laughs> that's how always it goes in life and so i don't put myself off in right from the beginning i get like 90 percent then i get to a point where i'm like oh man i need to do this area but i have to do because you have to do it. i need to finish so I, i'm just gonna start something where it's that simple and what are we gonna start probably will be eyebrows so eyebrows start it doesn't start from a straight line yeah you start with like a little tiny tiny hair what turns into more cleaner line and then turns into straight line so you don't do a flat line here yeah so you do like a little bunch of loads of little little lines tiny ones and then about this area turns into a full line yeah we're gonna do both we do it for second one start with little tiny hair that's where it starts and you do more of them more 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 till you get to a point it becomes a line and then you do a clean line to the end i always do like halfway ish and then i bring back a little bunch of thousands of little lines it looks something like this because this area the end we're gonna shade quite dark anyway so it'll go from dark into light into detail so there will be no detail whatsoever yeah and then it will go into into detail right in this area yeah i hope yeah. it's something like this start with the flat out corner it shouldn't be like black you can go with red blue green blue uh, whatever you want but basically flat out and and then go into little tiny 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 lines a little detail i'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better yeah see bunch of little lines people really appreciate those little lines they're very stoked Either, even this is now traditional, people like details and if you provide them with the details, they'll love you. And if they love you, you'll be busy always, all your life, because people love you and they, they're happy to give you money and support your lifestyle. So it's just something what appreciates them. Next, probably we're going to jump on our glasses. I would do with 
5, 0 0.05 because we don't need to bring any attention we need to make it visible but not push it out too far that it looks like it jumps into people's eyes so I'm gonna do the 0 0.05 and later on I'm gonna add some shading which is gonna give more shape to it so that's done I just realized it's easier for me to do on the skin than draw on the paper because I don't know I, I, I think I forgot how to draw on the paper it's very hard <laughs> I understand you guys it's not hard so next one we are gonna do the nose holes yeah but how to put that in words you don't do it circles okay never ever draw nose holes like that you can see that yeah don't draw that they are entries like a cave what goes only that okay so that's all you gotta draw don't ever draw a full circle they there then they come to the middle and same with these on that side and that's where the air goes in and this one has like a little cover let's say that and that would be the middle going that yeah so don't ever make a full circle i've seen some people done that which is really really bad so what you do is you make that area darker bolder and then you do line out like whipping yeah like that basically bold it's a thin yeah so you don't start with flat lines it's gonna look flat and that's how they're not uh, they, they, they don't look like that they're gonna be oval but the end for the top is darker and then it comes out really really light okay let's do it that was easy so what I do next is see these highlights here yeah? these little areas where you see whiter than others like that I line them so I would go like that like that really really thin small tiny line you can see yeah you, you line them same with the shadows I line the shadow shadow goes and then it disappears about here and you see a little highlight here or, or maybe that's the plastic thing here on the glasses let's do the side as well one just in case see this white area here I really line a little bit fine but line it same with this area the darkness finishes there and the line I think I did too hard you know but oh and then same here Sometimes it looks wrong, you know, when you like when you land it, you feel like that doesn't make sense, that doesn't look cool. But once it's all done and once you put the shading in there, it just makes it, it just does the job. Yeah, that's what I would do. Align the shadows and align the lights. See if I put my hand there, it's easier to see. See all this area? It gets darker. And then the darkness goes there, follows there. Uh, in line work it may be make no sense but once you align the lines and then you add the shading then it looks natural and then it looks realism as well and it's easier for you to understand where how far the shading goes how far you need to put the shadows in and it just makes life easier I know most places most cases I when I get to this point, it just makes no sense, it looks ugly, you ask yourself why, does it look right, but just crack on, just literally just crack on, line the whole thing, align every single shadow, every single highlight, just align it, put a circle around it, wobbles around it, just line it, and in the end of the, the drawing, literally in the finish, look at it, and it look amazing. Right, let's, let's not talk anymore, lips next, yeah, let's do the lips. So I decided not, I'm not gonna do the teeth because I just don't like to do them. If you if you do a teeth in your mouth, say for example this will be the upper lip, this part middle, yeah, 
it will look like this. It, it kind of looks like that. Yeah. And then if you if you accidentally line the harder feet than you should, they look bad. They look like beaver teeth, you know, they look like zebra or donkeys or something, you know. If you line them to just a fraction too too dark, that's it. Like the whole design is ruined. You can put a shading as much as you want, but it's just gonna bring them more out. It's gonna give them more contrast and they just look horrible. So I kinda get myself out of that situation. I try not to get into it, yeah. So literally I did exactly the same area as the line uh, as the lips were, but I just did the lip line in the middle so it looks like she had a closed mouth. In reality I can't take it off now anymore. But yeah, makes life easier. Then you just add like a little shadows here and there, a little highlights. That would probably shadow go like that. Some middle lights. You're gonna do all this later on anyway. A bit darker and more details in there. But for now, that's as much as we need. So next. I would probably jump on a face out outline. I wouldn't line with 0 0.8 yet. It's easy if you line with 0 0.5 or 0 0.1, and then you see how it looks like. And I don't know. I just don't don't do it that way. I like to gradually kind of build it up to that moment where I take the out uh, the 0 0.8 and and do bold one. Well, you just literally follow her lines. Try to do as clean as you can because it's gonna be her face lines. They can't be wobbly. People don't have wobbly cheeks. People don't have wobbly face. So try to get them like as clean as possibly you can. See here, you don't need any border. You just go to like that, leave it because all that's gonna be shaded in black anyway. So same in your tattoo, imagine this would be, here goes the hairline, maybe you can see, I don't know, but here goes the hairline, all that is black, and your line starts here, it doesn't even bother to line to that area, and you just follow that face line, just like that, so it looks already like halfway there, that was hard to understand what's going on in this area, it's quite, quite light in here. Well, I'm just gonna do whatever I see. So what else do we see? We see the neck goes here. Then the jacket starts. Or maybe there's another name for it, don't know. But I'll call it jacket. Then I'm gonna do the earrings. It's pretty much easy, like, it's quite straightforward. You just follow, like, wherever you see. And if you see, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's say this area, you can see there's dark area there. And I would just line it. Really thin line. Line it. And I, maybe it makes no sense now, but it will make it later. Same here. You can see it's there. And you just line it. Your cheek goes in here. I know. If you want any like facial ornaments, you draw on top of it. You got whole freedom in your hands. Same here, you just follow the lines and follow the lines. The first, what you do is do whatever you see. Like what you don't need to think of it. You don't need to wonder, you don't need to like get frustrated. Whatever you see, do it first. Then you can grab a pencil and you can play around. But wherever you can see physically with your eye, just carry on. Bring the image more, more, more closer to the end. And you will feel satisfied and it will give you better understanding of the map as well. Because if you take that off, that's all you have. So you better be done quite a lot more than, than this. 
because now you can't see where the hairline starts you can't see where the arm goes you know get get as much possible and then probably that's what we're gonna end up doing as well getting a pencil out and making up a new line some new shadows and the new stuff but as far as we can see now we just crack on same here see you it's really hard for, to understand what is in this area but I don't get it I need probably iPad or I need to take the image out put it next to me because through the paper it's really really hard to see what is going on in this area but what you do see is little little lines see you can barely see them but you can see them and just try to do them do as many as you can same will happen if you're gonna do an iPad if you take the saturation down it, it looks, it's gonna look like this it's gonna be hard to understand so just do whatever you see so far <laughs> A lot of people mostly get frustrated about hair and to be honest it was my problem as well I years ago and I was always second guessing myself but you need to kind of get you need to understand it's a hair it's not a structure of what meant to be in one specific form the hair just flows and if you just make it up like see if you make it up a new line like that just totally random does it look wrong no if you make it like that just a random line into nowhere it doesn't look any random you know what I mean it, hair is something you can play around get fun with it don't get too frustrated as long as you keep kind of the flow yeah you don't have hair going across see all the flow goes there it's like a water waves and just don't make a random line going across that will look like a mistake as long as it all goes in one specific direction that's all I need see she got a mess of hair here but I just cleaned them up because I didn't like the messiness there and by cleaner people find more attractive it's more polite more uh, professional and she becomes more sexy and more Oh, what's the name for it? I don't know the name for it, but you understand what I mean, yeah? You're good people. Uh, so literally just add random lines, don't get frustrated. So, when it comes to light source, okay? This would be where the light hits, yeah? She got highlights here on the nose, which means it's not on this side of the nose, it's this side of the nose. So the light came from here, yeah? Hit that which means the light will hit hair here and this will become the shadow so that area if you make it a little bit darker than the front then the one where the light will hit that becomes the shadow and all whatever is see there this will be another place where light hits you can see here and if this is curved pretty much then this would be the shadow and what I was gonna say with all this is see if the light hits here this is the curve yeah and this is the point of the curve which be the closest area to you this goes back in and that goes back to the back yeah so this would be the closest area to you that would be the lightest which means you need to the thinnest lines in that area and thicker lines in a shadow yeah so in the shadow you go from thick into thin from thick here into thinner from thick into thinner I know it's not traditional but it, it, it just makes that beauty same you do here this area you can make it just darker add more lines more structure probably we're gonna come back and clean all this mess afterwards but it's just darker area same here you can ma not make it bolder lines but you can add more lines to it 
which means it will look darker to your eyes yeah so this is the area where the light hits and that becomes a shadow so even if you just add line after line after line after line 1 billion lines it becomes dark you didn't do any bolder you just add more to it so the, the tattoo doesn't get heavier it gets a little bit darker and in a soft polite girly way you just tricked your customers or your own eyes that that area is darker but really you just add more lines to it same size lines just more to it and it gives you that feeling that it's, it's darker easy as that and see this little hair that's more behind if you just make that root a little bit darker here that just became behind it same here if you do a little bit darker there that's just now behind it same here put a little bit stronger there and then add more little lines of course you can add shading as a shading but now we're doing line work and with the line work I try to explain to you guys how just with the lines itself you can make it more realistic more 3d and voila you can see that now you can see the texture like this hair is on top of it that goes inside and then there's another layer from forehead hair coming backwards back out this goes over this goes underneath and that goes more on top of it which means you need to separate them if you add a little stronger line in between boom see it's that simple same here this becomes a shadow because the light hits here and this is the closest area to the light source and all that goes underneath so if you just add more little line work here or you just grab a shading needle and shade that area there but as we are doing lines I'm gonna explain the line work that became darker the same you do here if you add more lines to it or you thicken up the ones you have already yeah you thicken up them so you see this line here yeah and just the, the start of the line if you just make that a little bit thicker just uh oh. i don't know if you can see that in camera but that line just became way heavier like, see it's pretty simple pretty straightforward and i still do with 0 0.05 i haven't touched any different one because don't need to so, we did that now we need to make this area a bit cleaner because it's really really hard to understand what's going on so i reckon this is her shoulder you're gonna separate that heavier so you can see now that's one or something else and there's a lot of hair going from here turning around and going to the back so if you just add the same flow as they are not going against it but keeping the flow and joining the lines we have already we should come to the nice compromise And remember, yeah, if you try to copy and you, you struggle to copy, remember, this is your reference photo. We are not here to copy. Like, you are artists. So, take this and keep it to 80%, but rest of it, try to play around. Add the different earrings if you want it, you know. Scrub them, add the new ones. Scrub these sunglasses, add the new ones. Put some braces on her, on her wrist. Put some tattoos on her, put some different makeup on her, or the different shape of eyebrows, different hairstyle. You know, you can have a nice necklace down there, you can easily like add now and put some like, I don't even know, you can add tattoos on her, she can have a massive chest piece by now, and you can then do that on your tattoo design. Like, this is your design, who has tattoos as well? She could have a standing piece, she could have 
you know what I mean? Like, there's there's millions of options. Don't get frustrated if you can't get as it is. You know, it, it shouldn't be as it is. It's a reference photo. When you're asking your clients for reference photos, you don't ask them exactly what they want. They give you idea. They give you a theme. They give you a direction. And then you kind of find the middle way where it comes your ideas and his ideas, and then you get that in between. This done. It's not like you do whatever like hundred percent he wants, and he doesn't do whatever hundred percent you want. There is some sort of middle way. You both gotta be happy. So when it comes to drawing as well, don't get frustrated if you can't do hundred percent as it is, because you shouldn't do it. You know that's your reference photos. So you, you, you 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 need to learn how to play around, and don't get frustrated if you can't get it in the first place, because why would you? You know, just just have fun. Be an artist. Don't be a printer. This is what I learned from a guy from Ink Master, Jimmy Litwalk. He said, "Don't be a printer. Be an artist. Don't print. Don't copy. You know, just have fun. You got reference photo. Just have fun. Enjoy your time." Right. That's it. Let's get to eyes. So. It's pretty much the same story, like I can't see every single micro line in the eye but I can see the main ones and that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the main ones, yeah? You see this little highlight? You line it. You see this little black here? You line it. You see this little eyeball here? You line it. But try to be as clean as you possibly can, okay? Don't make any wobbles, it's eyes. The eyes, you know, they really 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 important stuff in your forehead so try to be really really as clean as you possibly can and probably a few lines will need to be lined by pencil to really like find out where they are where they're supposed to be uh, maybe i should go with a pencil first but i just jumped into with a fine line of straight but yeah it's one of them We'll find them. That's not an issue, not the first time. Down where right, these lines go. So it's 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 kinda like I can't explain you what really neurotraditional means because everybody else sees it different. There's millions and millions and millions of artists who does way different than I do and we all okay. And I mean everybody sees it a different way. We got different signatures, we got different styles, we got different line weights, we use different machines, we use different needles, we use, you know what I mean, there's millions of ways. It, it, it sometimes surprises me, like, how come it could be like that? You know, if you only, oh, how to put that in words, the needle goes up and down, yeah, that's all it does, up and down, up and down, up and down. But how come there could be a guy using different way of up and down? Or different pressure or different that like there's millions of ways using the same tools me and there's another guy in the studio we got the same machines we use the same needles we got literally like he and me are exactly the same but the way he does is looks way different than I do same tools but different worlds so yeah I, I totally forgot where I was going with this but yeah so, how far we are? And now this will be the, the time where I'll start to separate some stuff, you know. It gets to the point where I'll explain here. You get... Yeah. It gets to the point where there's so many similar lines next to each other. Like, you understand the flow, but it's not clean. And we need to make it look like it's HD, like it's printed, like, the com like you have done on your iPad or something. And so what I'm gonna do is, the big areas, like that is a jacket, that's a bigger line. Arm, hand, bigger arm. One piece of hair, like a, I don't know, like a bunch of hair. One flow, one, let's call it sausage, yeah. Let's name it sausage. So one sausage, I'm gonna line both sides. And next layer of that, 
can align that separate ones you you line it yeah with the border line because that is a separate thing that doesn't belong to this one that is by himself this is by himself that is by himself see this here that's where they're separate this one from that one and you line as clean as you can yeah that is separate from that now you want to separate this the arm the hand from the hair and you do exactly that take borderline well I use 0 0.5 0 0.3 sorry 0 0.3 and you separate that is different from that then you do exactly the same for this here you separate he this from a background yeah it still has to be a separate arm the hand from the jacket now you line the jacket because this line be belongs on a jacket that is jacket's line so you keep that the same size that goes there so probably now it gets to a point where I will line these glasses with the border line to separate them from the, the rest of the head and you do just that you line the whole thing same you're gonna do I'm gonna finish that on the time lapse the glasses but let me just explain to you same you separate the face from the hair and from the glasses and from anything else the face as it's as itself has to be set person so you can see it clean that's her face right in the middle okay, separating from the neck now you need to separate the neck from the earrings and the hair and you do that done try to whip it out the line lines yeah try not to pull a line and then keep it like that it looks flat it looks flat but try to whip it try to pull a line and the end of the line is whip it yeah get it out I know it thins it out it gives some depth it was bold, it was heavy, and then you get light. Okay? Try to just work on that. It's not gonna come in like a second, but it, it looks way better when you got a bold line coming and then it gets thinner. Same when you line on the on the tattoo, you pull the line and then you whip it out. So it gets thin out. It looks more realistic, it looks more 3D here gives better look to your tattoo if the whole design is purposely purposely I can't speak today purposely being flat and that's what you are aiming for then no issues that's not a problem in that case oh man I made a mistake See, don't get frustrated if you make mistakes, I just did one here. I'm not afraid to, to claim that. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it just happens. See, so you separate this layer from that layer. You separate that one from the background, from itself. There's some single ones you can do here. Even if you just come up right this moment with some single ones, that's not a problem. Give more details, give more, more something you, what your customer can look at. They really appreciate little details and they love it. And once you learn how to do, then you will love it. Um, same this when you separate from your head, separate hair from the face. You can do some single ones, and because it belongs to this bunch, this sausage, you bold line them separating from this 
then here you separate the hand from the hair and the hair these lines are on the hand you keep them in the same size You can see the image becoming more alive, a lot more cleaner. See, oh, that's a good thing. Well, I accidentally did that, but see, now even the light is not there and there's no 3D image, the photograph is behind it, what explains the image. Now, because of your line weight and the way it separates and, and it explains itself a lot more. You know what I mean? You don't even need to put any shading in there because you can see what's in, what's out, what's in and which is out you know that line goes in or where it comes out done well, let's carry on and probably in end of the this i'm gonna take 0 0.8 and i will line the whole outside of the whole thing just one fat line all the way around the whole design just the outside line itself no no in-betweens no middles just outside just whatever is outside our line again to make a like a frame big for big fat frame around the whole image it gives that one more step of cleanness it makes it more understandable and keeps Sucked in that area. Done, we're almost done with 0 0.5, we're getting close to the end. I'm probably not gonna do any shading in this video because I don't think I physically have time enough today to, to do the shading. If you do want to see it shaded in the future, you just drop in a comment, say, explain, or you want maybe to do some like color on this piece just request me you know because the things the, the problem is like because I can do them I don't know what you can't do or what do you want to see or what made you subscribe and watch you again or what made you watch this video I don't read people's minds and you don't do either so for me to understand you I need a comment I need something well you know you explain yourself why did you subscribe why did you watch this video what made you watch this video what did you learn what would you like to see more we need to communicate more with each other and then i know what to bring out and same happened with this video where the guy said he wanted to see how i contoured the portraits and i explained like starting from the eyebrow little hair into glasses into lips into highlights into everything i daily do and and I think there's a lot more people will benefit from this video, you know, not just him. There will be probably a lot more people watching and I'm gaining new information and that, that's the reason I'm telling you. If you need more information or more stuff, you just hit me up. Just message me or drop a comment or just be a human. Just be a human. I try not to go like crazy clean with this design. I'm just explaining you what am I what am I doing. It's not designed for any like specific person or I'm not aiming to, to sell this design or to do this design. I'm really what I'm doing is doing quite fast, but in a way I can explain to you guys exactly what I do and where I do and what's the process. Done, we done that, we done that. Let's separate that from that. Then we separate this from this. What's left to do? The glasses. Let's do the glasses. And I think it would be just fair if I add a little bit of shading in glasses just for this video I think it will cool remember yeah light has light travels straight so if it makes a highlight it has to be straight if it's reflection it's straight if there's no 
wobbles yeah either straight this way straight that way straight highlights on that area lights is kind of like a straight thing see the highlights on on this just straight see just straight as clean as you possibly can so when you're shading like something like highlights or something like glassy or anything like that just go straight glassy mirrors or windows or objects or subjects what would give some kind of reflection try to go with my straight line they and if this goes in this angle that has to be pretty much the same level the same angle just on a quick one really just I thought it would cool adding a little little shadows to it maybe behind the bit uh, just so it's behind the face and explain the face a little bit more that's it that's it let's put it that down so now what I would do is I would get 0 0.8 and in this case I'm gonna finish quite randomly let's say that just finishes there this would go right here and that's about it just I need some kind of finish to this one if this would be a tattoo design I might put like a big flower here or whatever would be here and that thing would come say imagine if this would be like a big flower here just about there and then I would put like a leaf here where we would cut this line off so it gives a permanent end it's not like finishing in mid air like this one but on this video it will be or I would bring the hair all the way across here around the arm and bring the hair here and maybe use like a, another jacket line to finish that area off and or a big something down here like a big you could easily squeeze a flower umbrella or octopus or whatever down here and cut this line off because it needs a permanent end you should never ever leave designs like that like empty or if you do like a flower this and then this one has no end there's nothing in this world with that like no end he has to finish somewhere has to be end. yeah I hope you understand so we should go with 0 0.8 and give that fine big bold line the whole all around this piece Sometimes I even go bigger than 0 0.8, sometimes I grab a marker and I go over with the marker and I make it a big flat line. But sometimes 0 0.8 they kind of curved, they, they have curved uh, ends, they don't give you like a flat, uh, flat finish. So you sometimes need to double line it to get that thickness what you're looking for and this is pretty much what I do daily every single day every single time I design I go through 90% of this process I build it up I don't go full with the flat lines or fat lines I build it up I go slowly I look what I need where I need and I make sure it looks right before I put something heavy and when you build up your image you get to a point where you start to understand what needs to be heavy what doesn't need to be heavy and where it needs to be heavy that you just don't go like full flat in and you're like oh shit I haven't done that why did I do this I can't go back and you you get yourself in a problem but if you just build steady that's cool and imagine if you tattoo this one because you're done on the paper you know it's gonna look cool on the skin so on the skin you can grab straight into like 9 liner 14 liner and just start from here because you already built all this on the paper so 
I, I prefer to build it up but like I said there's a lot of people with different styles and different preferences and they would say no to me they would say like my idea is not cool or not good enough but it works for me you now and if that made you watch this video you are interested if you get to this point you are well interested I bet not a lot of people get to this point I barely think anyone will watch the whole video in this generation people have no patience whatsoever they want it now and at this second so but if you manage to watch to this point then that can be relations, you know you, you learn something new you learn something better than anyone else I wish there was a video when I was just just starting and I could watch like from start to finish and and learn just a small bit but those small ones matter the most you know just a one little sentence could change your style one little sentence could change your from a style into career you could even I've seen some Instagram posts let's say this yeah I've seen some Instagram posts where people back in the days they started they tattooed in different style there was one guy who was doing realism crazy good but back in the days he wasn't touching realism at all he, w he was doing like neo tread full color neo tread and I don't know what happened to that guy but he wasn't going anywhere and when he did few realism tattoos his Instagram would get boosted and he get so many followers and so many likes and so many all oh, this and that he became famous and now people all they book in is realism so whatever he did that moment changed his career from that style to that maybe gave him more money because now he can afford more and people trust him more and people want him more you never know so all these little small bits and small sentences make a lot of difference and just by watching these minutes you just learn how to do all this yeah this is the final result this is how it looks like you got let's get out from there you got clean lines you understand what is where and if you do have any questions or any concerns anything like you want to do with this one or more of this or maybe males or dogs or animals like whatever that is just drop a comment literally just drop a comment i don't read your minds i don't know what you like guys so if there's something you wanna you let me know but so far thanks for watching and give me a like